out, 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 out. Yes. Go, go, go. Go, go. Go, go. Go, go. Out, out. Fire. 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 Go, go. Leave her. In the name of Jesus Christ, powers opposing my destiny, powers opposing the overflow of blessings in my life. Let those powers be destroyed. Let those powers be destroyed. Every marine power, every witchcraft power, every occultic power, every witch, every wizard, every agent of Satan opposing the overflow of blessings in anyone's life. I deploy the prophetic and apostolic mandate that is upon my life. Let that power be destroyed. Let that witch be destroyed. Let that wizard be destroyed. Let that be fire. In their covers, let them perish. Hey, spirit husband is running out of your life. Public vindication, public vindication. God will honor you publicly. 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 Mashita legadash. In the same place where they disgrace you, God will honor you there. In the same place where they humiliated you, God will honor you there. In the same compound, in that same family, where they wrote you off, where they say you, you are not anything, God will make you captain there. God will honor you there. Oh my God. Some of you right now, even in your father's compound, nobody regards you. They are treating you like a stranger. But there is a God in heaven. That's how they treated David. But God vindicated them. God will vindicate you. The Lord will settle you. Le baradaba shitolish, This God doesn't fail. This God doesn't fail. This God doesn't fail. Those who put their trust in the Lord, they cannot be put to shame. They cannot be put to shame. Death will not hurt you. Accident will not hurt you. Robbers will not hurt you. Sickness will not hurt you. Fire outbreak will not hurt you. Electric shock will not hurt you. He said, nothing shall by any means. Hebrews chapter 6, beginning to read from verse 12 to verse 18. That he be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. For when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself, saying, Surely, blessing, I'll bless thee. And multiplying, I'll multiply thee. And so, after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. He will obtain that promise. I say, you will obtain your own promise. For men verily swear by the greater. And an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife. Wherein God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel confirmed it by an oath that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us. May God's word prevail in Jesus' name. God cannot lie to you. Say, God cannot lie to wisdom. 
Uh, I said wisdom. He said, God cannot lie to wisdom. Look at this people. Okay. <laughs> Look at why I said that. Psalm, Psalm 89 verse 35. Psalm 89 verse 35. Psalm 89 verse 35. So I can prove to you that I'm correct in what I said. I read it. Once have I sworn by my holiness. This is God speaking. He started by saying in verse 35. My covenant will I not break. Nor alter the thing that is gone out of my lips. Once have I sworn by my holiness. That I will not lie unto wisdom. Oh, yeah, read it. Verse 35. Want to go. <laughs> Praise God. God's promise shall be confirmed in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Number one. God is desperate to prove his honesty. And to make you believe him. God is desperate. He's going to any length. He's doing anything possible to prove his honesty. To prove that he's not lying. He's going to any length so that you can believe him. Praise God. Look at it in verse 16 and 17 of that Hebrews chapter 6. 16 and 17. For men verily swear by the greater and an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife. Wherein God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his cancer. Immutable means you can't remove anything from it. You can't change it. Confirmed it by an oath. Why do people swear? Can somebody answer me? Why do people swear? To prove that they are not lying. But why should the almighty God swear to a person? Will you beat him? Praise God. If he didn't do what he promised, are you going to flog him? If he said one thing and did another thing, are you going to bring him down from his throne? He said, but I want you to believe me. I don't know how else to explain it. And there is nobody greater than me. I would have used the person to swear. But I used myself to swear to you. I will do for you what I promised you. God, God is desperate to, to prove his honesty. He came down so low to swear to a man. What else will God do for you to believe him? He has done everything, said everything. He even came down so low as a man. No other but person to swear by. He decided to swear by himself. He said, what I promise you, I will do it. God will never fail you. Praise God. That's why he is not happy when people doubt him. Number two, God can do anything to keep his promise to you. God can do anything, and by anything I mean anything, to keep his promise to you. Because this God, he says my covenant I will not break. I will not change the words that have gone out of my lips. In the book of Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 7 and 8, Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 7 and 8, I want you to be meditating. Is there a promise that God gave to you? Is there something God spoke to you in a vision? Something you had in a dream? A word that was spoken in the church and you know it was speaking about you. When you were meditating, when you were studying the Bible, a promise of the scripture that you saw and you know it applies to your condition. I want you to know that God will keep that promise. In the name of Jesus Christ. Look at chapter 7, Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 7. The Lord did not set his love upon you nor choose you because you were more in number than any people. 
for you were the fewest of all people. But because the Lord loved you, and because he will keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, had the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. He said the reason God filled Egypt with flies, filled Egypt with frogs, made the land to become dark. He turned River Nile into blood. All their firstborn began to die. He divided the Red Sea into two. He rained down bread for 40 years in the wilderness. Is the, he wants to keep the promise he made to a man. Who was that man? Abraham. The promise he made to one man more than 600 years ago. One man. More than 700 years ago. The promise he made to one man. He, he could go to any length to keep that promise. That he was going to give that land to Abraham and to his children. 700 years! He came to Egypt and brought them out. He said, you are stiff-necked people. People that harden their neck. He said, I'm not doing it because of you. They didn't even know God. When Moses encountered God and God sent him to go and visit the children of Israel and bring them out, he said, if I tell them that God has sent me, they will ask me what is his name. They had forgotten about the worship of God. Four, four generations have come and they are blended with the people of Egypt. Praise God. But still, God does not forget his promise that he made to a man who was faithful to him. Because of the way you have been serving God, you, your children, your children, children, God will preserve your generations. Praise God. When it was time, exactly 400 years, he began to stir up the mind of Moses. Moses did it by the arm of the flesh. So he went into exile. 390 years. That was when he stirred his heart. And then for 40 years, he was in exile. 430 years, God came again. So I'm not going to give up. The promise that I made to my friend, even though it's no longer on earth, it's in heaven. I am committed. This God will not lie to you. Lift your hand again. Say, this God that I follow will not lie to me. Praise God. You may look small in the eyes of people, but God will still keep his promise. He said to them, not because you are great, because you are the fewest of all people. We read it now. And even today, Israel is one of the smallest nations. But look at the Arabs. Billions. Billions. Surrounding one small tribe. And Israel is holding all of them hostage. Number two. God will bypass anybody if need be to keep his promise to you. Praise God. Sometimes God wants to use somebody to do something in your life. And it has become a privilege for God to use them. And they are abusing that privilege. They are behaving as if they are now God. But I want to let you know that if they don't do it, God will raise another person to do it. Praise God. What are some of the promises that God has made to us generally? Which I know is going to keep in your life. Number one, nothing shall by any means hurt you. Luke 10, 19. He said you will trample upon snakes and scorpions and overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nothing means nothing. Somebody say nothing. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. Death will not hurt you. Accident will not hurt you. Robbers will not hurt you. Sickness will not hurt you. Fire outbreak will not hurt you. Electric shock will not hurt you. He said, nothing shall by any means hurt you. 
That is something that will happen to a relative of yours. And you begin to cry. God said he will not allow it. He said nothing shall by any means hurt you. If somebody didn't kill you but he killed your mother, has he hurt you? Nothing shall by any means hurt you. Praise God. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. Therefore, every death sentence hanging over your life, hanging over any member of your family, today it is cancelled. I say it is cancelled. Every destruction is cancelled. Sickness shall not hurt you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Isaiah 54, 17 says, No weapon fashioned against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against you in judgment, you will do what? You will condemn. This God is so caring. He's so considerate that when he wanted to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, and he knew that Lot was living in Sodom, he went to Abraham. He said, how can I do this thing without telling my friend Abraham? It will hurt him. Number two, promise that I see God will do the impossible through you. Once God has spoken it, it doesn't matter how impossible it is. He came to a virgin and told her that she's going to conceive and give birth to a child. He came to a man and a woman that were old. And while the man was offering sacrifice in the temple, an angel went to him there and said, your wife will conceive and give birth to a child. Praise God. 2 Corinthians 9, 8 verse 9. He said, you know the grace of our Lord Jesus. That though he was poor, he was rich. Yet for your sakes he became poor. That you through his poverty might become rich. So no matter what the devil is saying, the word of God cannot fail. You will become rich. Can I hear believing a man? You will become rich. Can I hear believing a man? So I will become rich. No matter what the devil says. Praise God. Number three. This God will give you a mansion in heaven. Praise God. John 14 verse 1 to 3. He said. Believe in God. Believe also in me. He said in my father's house. Look at it. John 14. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may also be. This God has a mansion for you in heaven. Praise God. And you will make it to heaven. Say I will make it to heaven. Some people are afraid though. So I'll make it to heaven. I've told you I don't like preachers who preach as if nobody will be in heaven. Praise God. Making heaven is difficult. That's what the Bible says. He said narrow is the way and difficult is the road, the path that leads to heaven. But people are still there now. People are going there. And you will, when you finish your course on this earth, you will enter there. We shall all enter there. It is difficult, but it's not impossible. Some people talk about heaven as if it's impossible. It's difficult, but it's not impossible. You forget about lying, throw away cheating, throw away fornication, throw away all those things, deceit. Everything that you know will take you to hell, throw them away. But you will make heaven. Say amen. amen. Every day some people die and come back. And they see everybody they know inside hell. They have never seen one person inside heaven. Okay. See, since people have been dying and coming. How many people have they told you they saw in heaven? Especially Africans. Is Baxter. And maybe a few other persons, white, that say they saw some people in heaven. I've read stories upon stories, Africans, 
All the great preachers in Africa, they saw them in hell. They never saw any one person in heaven. Somebody shout fire. His wicked heart. When somebody hates somebody, he sleep and wake up and say he died. And that they saw the person in hell. Praise God. Hell is not a small thing. When a person has entered hell, he has entered. There is no coming out. It is a place of agony, a place of weeping forever. So it is a very terrible thing. And to enter heaven is difficult. Let no false preacher deceive you. He said, no, he just confessed Christ and the righteousness of God. If you commit sin, it is not you that is doing it. It is sin in you that is doing it. That is what some people preach on. And that's how they will be leading multitudes to hell. This hell, heaven, is not easy. But it's not impossible. Praise God. Because this, you need to kill sin. You need to kill iniquity. That's why Paul said, I beat my body. I put it under. So that after I preached unto others, I will not become a castaway. An apostle like that. Praise God. But heaven is not impossible. I don't like people who put fear. Because they just shall live by faith. It was by faith they entered Canaan. Those who believed that they couldn't enter it, they didn't enter it. Those who believe they can enter it, they enter it. Say, I shall enter heaven. Praise God. What is the key to this promise? Agree that God cannot lie to you and obey him totally. Agree that this great God cannot lie to you and obey him totally. Look at Hebrews where we read. Chapter 11. Hebrews 11. Lekoshito lakatabarados. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11, 17 to 19. Hebrews 11, 17 to 19. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And he that received the promises, offered up his only begotten son. Of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Accounting that God was able to raise him up. Even from the dead. From whence also he received him in a figure. What is that place saying? He said when God made a promise to Abraham. That your child. The child that is going to be born by Sarah. The covenant wife. Is going to be a blessing to the whole world. And then this God asked Abraham, bring that child and kill him for me. In Genesis 22. Bring that child, I told you, that is going to become president of the nation. That is going to become a blessing to the whole world. Bring him and kill him. The Bible told us why Abraham obeyed. He believed that this God cannot lie. That even if he used his hand to kill this child in obedience to the commandment of God, that God will still raise him up. Praise God. Because this God cannot lie. Can you believe God to that extent? If you believe God to that extent, you will pay tight. If you believe God to that extent, you will forsake that thing that man called marriage. He said, except he has fornication with you, he will not marry you. Which kind of rubbish marriage is that? If you believe God to that extent, you will know that God can go to any length to fulfill his word concerning you. One door closed, seven doors open. Praise God. Agree with God in your mind. Agree with God in your words. Agree with God in your action. The highest form of madness is to doubt God. The highest form of madness is what? To doubt God. To, to call black what God called white. If you are accepting Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, say after me, Lord Jesus, 
I come to you today as a sinner. Forgive me all my sins. Cleanse me from every unrighteousness. Cancel my name from the book of death. Write my name in the book of life. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. I accept you today into my heart as my Lord and personal Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My name is Enweke Edith Chinwe. I want to thank God. Last Sunday, I testified of God's mercy, financial gift. And uh, I didn't even know that that very Sunday, I was to receive no, another, another one. one. <laughs> receive another one again. Another one again. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. On a walk. On a walk. That's all right. Praise God. The summary of this testimony is that they have had, the wife has had a number of conceptions before and it was always baby girls. And somebody used to appear in the dream to manipulate the sex of the baby. But after prayers in this place, that power was broken. And there was a declaration made from here. Because they have already had five girls. And the woman was uh, a few months pregnant when she came. And every indication was that it was also going to be a baby girl. I said, from now, that power that has been manipulating your babies is destroyed. Now you will know that there is a greater power. You will give birth to twin boys. Praise God. And today those twin boys are here. Shout hallelujah. We are going to dedicate the babies. Everybody stand to your feet. Lift your hands and begin to worship this God. <laughs> 